Gittimer Certified Advisor, Mitch Taylor. And Certified Personality Trainer, Vicki Musney. And on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about being in the moment, part duh. (laughs) (laughs) In other words, the specific process you need to follow to be in the moment. How intriguing. That was nice and easy. What are you talking about? This also speaks to a much bigger issue. Providing personal solutions through understanding people. This is the Creating Connections podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. Thank you for joining us today for Creating Connections podcast episode 56. I'm Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor. And I'm Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. And today we're going to be talking about being in the moment. This is part two of our podcast that we started last week in regards to this segment, kind of born out of uh, some comments and videos and uh, posts that were related to reactions. Yeah. Reactions is a good way to say it of my roar talk of being in the moment. And that moment was born out of real. And the reality of Allison and Cleo and her mother, Christine, who posted on Facebook. And yes, I'm friends with Mothers the Bride on Facebook as well. And posting about how she lost her dad. And about a year and a half prior, her father, Allison's grandfather, had a chance to dance with Mm -hmm. his granddaughter on her wedding day. I love that picture. And the gleam in Cleo's eyes and that knowing smile is exactly why we do what we do. I don't think a wedding should be boiled down to our our father-daughter dance or a first dance even or mother-son dance. Those are all culmination moments of that relationship up to that point. Mm -hmm. And for father-daughter, mother-son, how are you compressing 20 plus years of life into four minutes? And for a first dance, it's the same thing. It's the culmination of their courtship. So it's important. And there were people online that reacted. Why don't you cover this, Vicki? Well, just different comments. And I think there were a lot of people that were saying, oh, yes, this makes sense. We need to be in the moment. And there were a lot of people in particular that talked about Mark Farrell's influence, you included, Mitch, on how taking those workshops and learning that Marbecca method, if you will, yes. has helped them learn <clears throat> how to in the moment. And then I saw someone, and I, I guess I'm kind of glad I can't remember exactly who it was or where it was, um, but the, basically the comment was, I'm really proud of the fact that I don't script anything because that is what allows me to be free and be in the moment at each of my events. And so I raised the question um, during the last episode, which is what led to this part two, because I think it is a separate topic, is how do you, how do you prepare? Because you alluded to that last time, that being in the moment starts with preparation and yes. understanding, and there is a process to it. And I'm much newer at this. And I I readily admit that I had only emceed three weddings before I went to the Marbecca Bronze workshop for the MC workshop. And uh, I've done more since then. And it has totally shifted the way I approach things. But scripting was one of those big things that I really embraced. Yet I also acknowledge that I break script, but I do the preparation. So how do you... How do you do that when you're emceeing? I mean, you and I both do it when we speak and we present. I think it's important for you to have the basics down first. And before anyone thinks that I'm a shill, uh, that's not the case. There are lots of different trainings that I recommend. Mark Farrell with the Marbecca Method, and especially for the Master of Ceremonies workshop, teaches the basics, Mm -hmm. which you need to master the basics first. And I'm not talking about where you hold a microphone, although many DJs could learn from Mark in regards to mic placement. 
Uh, that was one thing he told me I did well my very first time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, you're not a rapper, but or a singer, or a karaoke, or you're calling the calling the chord, you know. Yeah. Um, but regardless, so the basics of the and the mechanics of your announcement. It's kind of like the basics and the mechanics of how to ride a bike. You don't just, oh, I'm proud of the fact that I don't know how to ride a bike. I just hop on and ride it. No, <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, you need to understand the mechanics of what it is that you are mm -hmm. doing. There's a specific process yep. that you should follow if you're going to be broadcast good if you're going to be ryan seacrest good from that standpoint we're not trying to be dj good dj good is sucks frankly um i'm in a mood oh. <laughs> um, tell us how you really feel yeah i'm in a mood today I had some different things happen recently so it's just gonna put me in a mood um so regardless you know you need to master the basics. And in fact, you know, here are literally notes upon notes upon notes upon notes of just workshopping with Marbeka method. These are all notes that I've taken with Mark and Rebecca. There are six steps to a welcome. And, you know, and so specifically, how do you do that? Bring in one of my MCs here right now and they could rattle off a welcome to you because they practiced it, they rehearsed it. Why? Not to sound scripted, in fact, quite the opposite. So they don't have to sound scripted. Exactly. So they know what belongs there. They know the pieces Correct. so, so well and how they fit together because yes. they've done the preparation. That's what really allows them to be in the moment. So they can be in the moment. Yes, because the they're audience. not trying to recite something they memorize. They're not trying to read word for word something that they're holding on an iPad in front of them. Right. They're, they've done it and they know it. They and then they're it. free. They practiced it. Mm -hmm. They understand the purpose yeah, of it. They know the why. And it's so crucial that you get this. And I'm not saying you have to take a workshop I think it's going to help you immensely if you take a workshop to do this. Um, and I would certainly recommend to take a workshop. Follow the path I, I did. I'm happy. Yeah, don't just take a workshop. Keep taking them. Take, take many. Um, I just posted yesterday about, you know, literally it was six years ago that I was in that comedy training workshop with Kyle mm -hmm. Cease and Louie Anderson. And that was, that was a big deal to me. It made me realize that I don't ever want to be a comedian. <laughs> I knew that without taking a comedy workshop for me. <laughs> well, I think I'm funny. And a lot of people think I'm funny in, in most cases. And I can, you know, crack jokes with the best of them. But I play off of the crowd or I play off of the situation. When you're sitting up there with just a microphone and the red light in front of you and, it's, and you got an audience and you, the lights are on you and the audience is there and make me laugh, funny boy. Yep. I've always said I and would rather. And it's just you and this. Yep. I always said I'd rather have people expect something serious and be pleasantly surprised when I can add humor than to feel that pressure of just go be funny now. On purpose. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I, I encourage you to expand your comfort zones to find a new way to stretch and grow. It doesn't I have a mic night once, a comedy night. Good for you. I needed to do it. And um, I've never had the urge to go back and do it again. But. but we as DJs, as a master of ceremonies, any wedding professional, frankly, doesn't have to be just a DJ, but you rely on your crutches way too much. We rely mm -hmm. on our lights, our music, our gear, our audience, our, you know, our microphone. We rely on all those things way too much. When it's you mm -hmm. and the audience and you've mastered the basics for each moment, now you're free to be an artist, to play, to truly connect with that crowd and move them emotionally through the event. That's what I wish anyone watching this, please get to that point. Mm -hmm.
humble yourself. I'm not done. I'm oh, going to take more steps. Uh, yeah. You never arrive. It's a firm belief of mine. You never arrive in business. You never arrive in performance. You never arrive in sales. You never arrive in marketing. That's why we're always trying to get better at any one of the six facets. And I'm, if you've watched this any length of time, you've heard me talk about the six facets. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is a formula and I'm not giving away secrets here. You can take workshops and put in your own time and your own monies to learn these. Just like I have invested thousands of dollars thousands, <laughs> to obtain this training. I encourage you to do the same. Yeah, but I think that's the key for the, the, my takeaway from this conversation is that it's putting in that time and that preparation. Yeah. That's what allows you to be free, to be in the moment. And it takes time. This is nothing you're going to have done overnight. You can't take one workshop and be in, oh, I got it. I got my certificate. You know? yeah. No, I mean, frankly, if I look back through, here's a, <laughs> literally like six books here. I can probably tell you that I've got a lot of certificates still sitting in these books and not out displaying. To me. Yeah, here's one right here. They're not out displaying to my client because the fact that, you know, um, I, you know, I, I've got one or two display. That's okay. I don't need to sit here and display, I don't know, eight or 12, whatever number of workshops I've taken. <laughs> At some point it becomes overkill. It's not for sales. No. I don't do it to earn the certificate. I do it to earn the knowledge. I do it to get the coaching. You do, do it, it to get the practice. better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's something I would implore you to do. Yeah, for sure. So that's it for today. If you have comments, questions, thoughts, ideas, one of my teachers in middle school used to say that questions, comments, thoughts, ideas. <laughs> questions, comments, concerns, and complaints is what oh. my teacher used to say. <laughs> Always end in a negative. What's up with that? I don't know. Okay. So but you can, you can post those too. Yeah. Post down below. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we would love to hear your thoughts and, and questions and things like that. What do you have for future show ideas? Comment down below as well. Check us out together at creatingconnections.biz. That is our joint website. We'd love to hear from you there as well. And get on our hashtag 31 day challenge. I'm Gittimer Certified Advisor, Mitch Taylor. And I'm Certified Personality Trainer, Vicki Musney. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Creating Connections podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. For more information on providing personal solutions through understanding people better, visit creatingconnections.biz.